Hey guys, so this video is gonna be a tutorial on how to make the princess cut blouse which uh, looks like this and I had already up uploaded a video or like a two part video like part one and part two on how to make a princess cut blouse but I ended up deleting it because I thought it was so badly explained but I'm making another tutorial this video because one of you guys requested it and this one is gonna be with sleeves so princess cut, cut blouse with like I think I'm gonna do like mid-length sleeves so yeah hopefully I explain it better in this one I'm gonna be using this fabric that I bought from India over a year ago yeah I know yikes and I'm gonna be using this like navy blue lining fabric to use as lining because this fabric is like kind of sheer so I wanted to like you know not have everything well you can't see it but it is sheer but I also do not want any everything on like display so I'm gonna be using this and this is lining to make this blouse here are the measurements that you'll need these are the measurements and my measurements and the ones that I'll be working off of when I make the pattern that I'll show you guys but this is how you take them so for bust it's basically your boobs area um so you do the highest point here mine is 32 and then you have to do your waist so basically whenever you bend wherever there's like a crease in your body that's your waist and for me that is 25 and then you'll need your length for how long you want the blouse i usually do like 14 which ends right here and some people do like a neck but i kind of just do random like i just i just do whatever i just eyeball the neck but i typically do like eight or nine which is like kind of here and then we'll need however long you want your sleeve to be um i think for this one i will do like six inches and then you'll also need wherever your sleeve is ending get the measurement of that because i'm doing mid length so do this uh this is what i'll do sorry which is my oh my gosh and mine is nine but if yours is ending like further down here or like further up here that's where you take the measurement and then you also do like an armhole measurement but which from me which was 17 but people use there's usually like a for armhole length there is like a standard measurement that people use especially in india it's either like five or 5.5 for me that is way too tight so i do like six that's what i use but usually what you're supposed to do is take the circumference of this and then divide it by two and if you divide 17 by two it's like it's it's this number i can't do mental math but it's that number but i think i'll be using six for arm length armhole now the voiceover starts hopefully i do good so what you guys are gonna do is fold your lining fabric first because that's what we're gonna mark all our measurements and make the pattern on so fold it like this make sure it's like lays down really nicely so what we're gonna mark down first is about three inches away from the fold we're gonna do the shoulders first so that's how far apart the shoulders are gonna be and then i'm marking down about eight inches for the neckline and then just drawing a straight line and then yeah and then connect that to the fold so that's basically our neck now and then i'm measuring 14 inches down from the top top which i should have done at the beginning but whatever <laughs> that's the length of our blouse and do the same on the other side so it's even at the bottom here what we're doing is marking our chest which for me would be eight inches because you divide your bust measurement by four and then i'm also doing my waist which is 6.25 and then i'm just combining them and i'm also adding a slack of two inches and combining those two lines together as well just for like if we want to make adjustments later on and then the thickness of the blouse shoulder or whatever is gonna be three inches so i marked that as well and then i came down about six inches like i told you guys for my armhole and then i'm just connecting that all the way to those other lines as you can see I had bought the armhole down way too low, which is why I'm just bringing them back up and just fixing that error real quick. 
but yeah this is what it should be looking like and then i'm just gonna connect those lines as well and then we're gonna draw like a little curve because obviously there's curves in the blouse we don't just do like square unless you want like a square neckline but i'm curving everything here this is a bit of like the confusing part we're gonna add darts so that it fits on our chest properly i'm gonna take in three inches from the fold and then three inches high up in the middle and then just draw like a little curve to the armhole and then we're gonna mark like 0.75 inches from that middle line and just make like this little triangle dart like that and that's gonna be cut later on but since we took away that like one at 1.5 inches i'm just adding it back to the end of the blouse because mats okay i really can't explain that and then we're just going to take the blouse up a little because again math i don't really know how to explain that so that is basically it for patterning of the blouse and then you can just go ham on the cutting <laughs> But I hope so far it made sense. If it doesn't, let me know in the comments, please, so I can just make a separate video on patterning. And for the pattern for the back, we're just going to use the front as like a general outline. So just mark the armhole is going to be the same. So mark that. And the neckline is going to be low, so we're not marking that yet. But we are marking the bottom because the length is going to be the same for the front and back. So uh, the neckline for the back is going to be way lower. So this is about like... 10 inches i want to say you can make this however long you want but i usually like a low back in the back then we're going to be marking our chest for me it is eight inches which i got by dividing 32 by four because this is folded so that is why you divide it by four and then also marking the waist on the bottom which is the same measurements as the as the front of the blouse and the back is not as complicated at all but we add like a mini dart if need be also, the reason that I use red lining for the back is because I ran out of blue. No other reason than that. But yeah, you can go ahead and cut the lining. And when you're done cutting the lining, we can also cut the middle because this is on a fold as well. So just like as you guys can see me do here, just cut the middle because the back is going to be open. Once we have both of our linings, we can put them on the actual fabric and then just cut them out. And also, please look carefully here. When you're done cutting the outline out, we're going to cut the dart out. You're going to cut the little triangle thing in the middle. You're going to cut the little triangle thing out so there's like a uh, shape missing kind of. And then cut the back out as well, but there's no need to cut the dart out or anything for this because the dart here is more of just like an eyeball thing and not really necessary. And then for the actual fabric, make sure to cut the middle of the back out also, like I'm showing here. Now we're going to pattern the sleeves. I literally forgot that we were doing the sleeves as well. But you take, you put it, you put the sleeves on a fold as well. We mark six inches out from the fold and however long we want the sleeves to be. And then I'm subtracting three inches from that top right there. And then using like this little squiggly line to do it. I'm going to add a link to how to make the sleeves as well in the description because this is low-key kind of confusing and i added an extra like half an inch right there just for seam allowance and then we can just go ahead and cut the sleeves out and also make sure to be like a little careful around the curves and stuff and then we're going to use a sleeve pattern that we just made and cut another one out because we need two sleeves can't be like walking around with one sleeve that would be funny looking i mean we could but not for this tutorial and then once you have the lining, you can use that to cut uh, the actual fabric. Again, rough chop, but make sure you have two of those. Now that we've cut all the pieces, and I, oops, and I hope you guys understood what I said, and I said it clearly enough that it was easy to follow, we are going to stitch this blouse together. So the first thing that we're gonna do is combine our front pieces that we cut so our front piece is the middle piece that we have and also the side piece that we cut and added like a little dart here we're going to combine it to make the full front piece this is one of the golden rules of sewing always put right sides together meaning the fabric that you want to show on the outside like if i was putting this side and the front piece together put the right sides together, like the right sides, the two sides that will be outside, touching, and then you sew along the border. 
before you even start sewing. I have literally said this a million times and I will continue to say it for a million more. Invest in this basting adhesive. I don't think this is that expensive. It's like 12 bucks. I get mine from Walmart. This is what I use and this is like the color that it comes in. This is semi, oh, this is temporary bond. It's not a permanent bond, it's a temporary. So usually when you have lining in the actual fabric, especially for a blouse, the way that they traditionally sew lining and the actual fabric together is they just sew the borders of the lining and the fabric together so that they so that it becomes like two layers. But if you just use this, spray it on the lining and then stick it to the actual fabric, you just skip a whole step of sewing and you save so much time literally the best thing ever i use it for like clips and putting buttons i literally like spray the button onto the fabric so that it doesn't move under the machine genius blows my mind invest in this literally best thing ever as i mentioned you guys can sew the lining and the fabric together but i'm not doing that so i shake the bottle really well because that's literally the instructions and then i spray it on the lining and not the actual fabric because sometimes if you don't shake the bottle and you spray it like liquid comes out and the liquid literally stains the fabric so i would rather the liquid stain the lining than the actual fabric so that's why i put it on the lining and then i just stick the actual fabric onto the lining and then i also work in sections like you just saw i just did the bottom half i made sure that was stuck on properly and then i sprayed the sleeves and then finishing that out make sure to spray or stitch the lining and the actual fabric together of every single piece that we have cut out and yes even the sleeves which i will be doing right here but make sure you do all of that so after you've sprayed the lining or stitched whatever you decided to do together the way i cut the actual fabric is like there's gonna be a little excess because i did like a rough chop this ensures that the size will fit to you because I cut the lining very precisely, just the actual fabric a little more loosely. So when you actually sew or um, spray this together, you have some excess left and then you can cut it together. Not together, you can cut the excess off and then you're going to have more of like a correct fit. So that's what I'm going to do with all of these. I'm just going to cut the ex extra off and have a better fit i'll be honest this is one of the more tedious things or part of the making the blouse but it just makes the blouse look more neat so it's like yeah, one of those steps but gotta get through it now that i've cut everything out and made it look neat now is actually when we're gonna start switch stitching first like i said before we're gonna stitch the front pieces together to make the full front piece so take your piece that's like this the center middle let me just yep. and then the sides this one goes like this and you're gonna have like a little section which is what we want because then it's gonna fit to your body and then this other part goes like this so what we're gonna do is let me get my pins the pins are also an essential part of the sewing thing i'm gonna make a new I'm gonna make a video which has like all the essentials to sewing especially for beginners because i wish i knew about this so i'm gonna help you guys but for this video what i said about being right sides together this one goes on this side right so this is the outside fabric so this is the right side this is the outside fabric so this is the right side and the lining this is the wrong side we don't want it to show on the outside so what we're gonna do is right sides together like they are meeting they're touching so together and we're just gonna start pinning it from right here so i'm gonna take this pin i try to i like to pin sideways so as the machine goes you can just take it out like this instead of doing like front then you're like you're struggling i don't like that so we just keep going and then pin all the way down once you've pinned it together it should look like this this is what it looks like when you sew it when you're done sewing it make sure to pin it properly especially near the shoulder part but on the bottom if you have extra fabric left over like me that's fine everyone it'll even out in the end 
but yeah make sure you pin it properly because that's how it's gonna sew be sewed so we're gonna sew a straight line and then do the same to the other side as well this is a part that you don't really want to rush because you want like a good shape especially since this is on the front so just try to go slow and steady I made a little mistake I forgot to show you guys not a major one so but when you I sewed one side okay so this is what it looks like this is why we made the dart because look how neatly it fits to my body without like poking out anywhere so when we created a dart right here this comes down because we lose fabric here so i had marked out like a little line like this so that it can even out so that's basically what all we're doing we're just gonna cut it a little like at a a straight line so the fabric doesn't come down we want it to go straight so do the same with this side Ooh, this side as well after you sew it just make sure just cut everything like a straight line I've sewed both sides together and look how good it fits so basically you see how this comes down like comes down just make all of this into a straight line and even this excess part I just want to give you guys an explanation on why we have this excess Essentially, when you're sewing this part, right, ideally, you want to pull a little bit on the curve so that this will match this because mathematically, it's not wrong. We are just supposed to pull a little when you're stitching. I sometimes forget to do that like this time. It's not that big of a deal. It's just that your blouse will just be a little bit shorter. Obviously, it looks more neat if you stitch this while pulling a little bit so that the fabric matches but it's fine if you don't I have not had like any problem just because I didn't sew with a little bit of tension so all you want to do right now is just cut a straight line and make the bottom straight to make sure that you cut like a perfect straight line fold it and then cut the straight line I'm just cutting the excess of the middle right here but yeah have it use like a guide or something and then just cut it straight down the middle see now it looks so much neater and it looks straight now that we have the front piece, what we're going to do is that we're going to take our two back pieces. This lower part is the back center and this is the armhole. These should be this, so this is what the back will look like. So again, remembering right sides together, what we're going to do is this is near the armhole. So it goes on this side, this side, right side, right side together and make sure the armholes match okay and then this again this is the armhole and right side goes on right side and the armholes also match so what you're gonna do is pin on the top and we're just gonna make a stitch on the shoulder right here and right here so just stitch those together <laughs> If you have followed all the steps properly, this is what your blouse should look like when you put it on. You should only be able to see the fabric outside, not the lining fabric like this. Next is a little fun, challenging, tricky little part. We're going to be attaching the sleeves. I don't really like this part, but whatever. You gotta do what you gotta do. So, we're going to take the sleeves, right? So, this little curve that we have. This goes literally where we have the stitch this, on the center right here. So this goes right here exactly like this, okay? Let me show it in a better way. This is the sleeve right here. We're gonna be adding the sleeves and this is where we stitched the shoulders together. So what we're gonna do is take the fabric the center of the little circle thing, put it right like this in the middle and then pin it literally like all the way across, pin it all the way across. And it's not gonna meet at the end, okay? So don't worry, just start pinning it from the center and just keep going for as long as it goes. Using pins, I'm telling y'all, crucial. It makes sure that your fabric doesn't move and you get a much better and neater stitch. I used to not because I used to think, oh my God, I'm better than everyone. Literally, use the pins. You're doing yourself a favor and all your garments are gonna turn out for the better. So use your pins, they will help you. 
and try not to poke yourself. I've literally lost blood trying to do this, so be careful. <laughs> Once you guys are done pinning it, this is what it should look like. Okay, and on the outside, this is what it's gonna look like when we're done sewing it, right? So we pin it like this. I know it's like an awkward shape, which is not my favorite. So care be careful and don't like fold over anything and then like sew over it because then you're gonna have to like <laughs> remove it and then do it again. That's not fun. So the uh, reason we have like extra piece left over right here is because I don't know if you guys remember at the beginning when we were cutting or we we're marking the fabric, we added two inches just for like slack so you can increase it or decrease it based on like how like in blouses i'm so bad at explaining this but in blouses they usually give like two inches of slack so you can either tighten it or loosen it up to two inches but we didn't do that to the sleeves i usually don't do it to the sleeves we probably should but i just don't so that's why we have that extra um fabric left over it's not a big concern unless you want to like make it bigger because then you should probably add two inches to the sleeve when you're cutting it this i would recommend go literally so slow this is sped up okay this is not real time but go slow because it's on curves and the fabric under it literally might fold over this has happened to me so many times especially with sleeves that the fabric under it like folds over and no like you don't want that to happen but so yeah just be careful i sewed one side and this is what's wait this is backwards oops this is what it should look like the front, the sleeves, and then when we combine the sleeves, this is what it's gonna look like. Again, be so careful when you're sewing this because I'm telling you, it's literally not fun having to remove it and redo it. Literally, a waste of like thread, time, energy, and everything. So just be careful, get it right on the first try, and then you won't have anything to worry about. Sewed about the sleeves, and this is what they look like. <sighs> this was. The second hardest part I lied, okay? There's one more hard part, which is called piping. We're gonna add piping all around the neckline, the like right here, the neckline, and then we're gonna add it to the end of the, actually, the sleeves is optional if you wanna do it, or sometimes the sleeves, you can just fold it inwards and just make a hem. Um, I think that's what I'll do for the sleeves. I'm gonna add, I'm just gonna do hem for those. But on the neckline, we're gonna add line piping and mm, and yeah that's about it we have nothing we're gonna have we're gonna just add piping to the lining and then combine everything together <laughs> and we're almost done you guys you're almost done with your first blouse so the piping is made out of lining fabric and we cut it diagonally because when you cut it diagonally you get more stretch in the fabric and you're able to pull it a lot more especially since neckline has a lot of curves you can pull it and just like adjust as you go and since for the piping we cut in like so many pieces we make sure to attach those pieces together and follow the again like right sides wrong sides rule because we're gonna put the right side of the piping to the right side of the fabric so that you can't see the stitching and it looks more professional like you see me doing the video i hope this is easy to follow yeah but do what i'm doing here i'm gonna make a separate video on how to cut the piping why we cut it the way we do and how to cut it properly and how to put it on the blouse properly but for now just like this long piece of piping that we have this is really long probably not gonna use all of it maybe like three-fourths but just like these fabrics have a right and a wrong side so does the piping so the pipe the right side of the piping is the one where you can't see the stitching this is a pretty side so what we're gonna do is the lining not lining i'm sorry i keep saying line piping the piping we're gonna do it on the neckline which is basically not it's literally like here goes all the way down here and then this like this literally goes all the way basically i'll put it on and show you guys i'm like sweating doing this gosh but so basically we're adding the piping all the way from here to here to this edge to here hope to here to here and all the way down there 
that's where we're adding the piping. So how we're gonna add it, right side. This is, we're gonna start from the back because that's the open area, right? We're gonna take the piping, put the right sides together. Make sure the stitching is facing you, okay? Put the right sides together and just make one long stitch all around, all around, okay? This also, make sure to go slow. I say that to everything, so just go slow on everything, especially if this is your first time making it. Making a blouse for the first time, I'm telling you guys, I sucked butt, okay? Like, it took me like a good three to like six months to make like a decent blouse. So don't be discouraged, this is definitely like trial and error. But yeah, especially when you're adding piping, make sure you keep like the same spacing and that it's not uneven, that everything's right, so that it just looks more professional. Piping is what makes it look neat, I'm telling you guys. If you don't add piping, it looks like janky. Okay, so we've added the piping all throughout, and this is what it should look like. All the way around, right? All leftover piping, don't worry about that. We can honestly just cut it off, we don't need it. Um, so what we're gonna do is, you have this, right? So you're gonna just take it, fold it over and have only like a little bit showing like just like this much it makes it the blouse looks so much more neat so we're just gonna fold it and just give it a little top stitch right here all the way up all the way throughout top stitching is basically a stitch that is going to be seen on the seen on the outside so i know i literally said this last but go slow especially like literally especially really slow for this one because if you mess up a little bit it's gonna show on the outside unless you use a, a like a color with thread that's really similar but i'm using white here so you guys can see the stitch but yeah especially for top stitch this is literally make or break the blouse okay i went i rushed a little bit because i want to get this video out to you guys but go literally like so mad turtle slow mine is not that neat that's because i'm rushing to get this to you guys but you guys don't rush do this slowly another golden rule of sewing but this is what it should look like for now it's gonna like try to do this but there's a solution for that also what we're gonna do is we're gonna take scissors and literally cut as close as you can to this and just cut this excess off that will prevent it from trying to like flip and it will lay the lining really pretty i'm also going to hem the sleeve like this like maybe like half an inch and just just sew a straight line on both the sleeves if you guys are using fabric scissors which all of you guys should literally invest in fabric scissors please <laughs> again go slow on this part because i've literally cut the blouse doing this because it's literally like so close to the fabric i've done it and it's literally the most disappointing thing ever because you've gotten this far you don't want to cut the fabric or like the blouse and ruin it so go slow make sure you cut only the excess and yeah the closer you can get it to the stitch without actually ruining the stitch the more neatly it will lay on your body so now when you put the blouse on it should not be trying to turn and it does not look how neat it lays and now i'm gonna hem sleeves i decided to hem the sleeves because i didn't have enough time to do piping but adding piping definitely makes the blouse look more cohesive but even if you want to hem it it's literally fine not a big deal it looks neat either way now that we have hemmed the sleeves what i want you guys to do is we have this blouse right here oh sorry we have the blouse right here what we're gonna do is turn it like this, make sure that the sleeves match up, and literally sew to the sides like this, and just sew a straight line all the way down. So put that to this side, and then this side as well. This is literally the last step of the blouse. Just sew the straight line, it like combines the whole thing together, and you can actually try it on and see if you need to tighten or loosen anything. We are almost done with the blouse, so now that you've stitched both the sides together, just literally like push the sleeve out. My nails are not cooperating with me. So, and then do the same to this. And literally put it on and see how it feels. 
and then you know the stitch that we made you can make an extra stitch like this to make it tighter so the stitch that we made like from here to here the straight line it's just like a little bar ballpark stitch to see if everything fits good like this as you can see my sleeves are a bit loose so I can I'm just gonna tighten that and here also like hold it like this in the back and see if everything's good. For me, everything is good on the bottom. No need to change anything, but sleeves are a bit loose, so I'm gonna do that. And also, on the bottom, your back is gonna be a little bit longer than the front. Just line it up and cut, make them even, just cut them up. I'm gonna go ahead and hem the bottom as well. Just fold it in like this and just make a stitch so that everything is all pretty and neat and professional. Same as how we hemmed the sleeves, you can hem the bottom, but you can also add piping to the bottom if you wanted. Again, makes everything just look more cohesive, but mine, because of like a time constraint, I just decided to hem the bottom. Uh, we are basically done with the blouse. So all that you really have left to do is here adding like the hooks or buttons or whatever you want to use. I don't want to waste buttons and hooks because this was just like an example blouse. But there are tons of videos on YouTube. I'm going to link some on how to add hooks, clip, not maybe not clips, but hooks and buttons in the description. And I'm also going to put some other videos that I use to learn how to like make this blouse because I feel like I'm not the best at explaining stuff. I will get better, I promise, but this was just like a rushed version of how to make this princess cut blouse, but I definitely will make another one which is more detailed, like step by step, and like the patterning, cutting, stitching is gonna be like a totally, like they're, th they're gonna be three separate videos, so it's just gonna be like a little series. But for now, this is what we made, and I'll, I'll put it on, I'll show you guys. This is what it looks like, it's so cute. I did not expect it to be this cute, but this is what the back looks like. And then, uh, like that. So, you guys can also add, hold on, you guys can also add like a string that blouses normally have so it does like fall off of this. But this is what it looks like. I'm gonna give you guys like a little close up and stuff. This is what it looks like. This is what yours should also look like. The back. 